What's up, guys, and welcome to a very festive episode of the weekly Q and A. I lost my ugly sweater. I'm sad about it. <laughs> we'll find you a new one. Atakan Aiden asks if the Darth Vader comic confirms that Palpatine was Anakin's quote unquote father. I think that this is something that'll always be open for debate, open for interpretation. Uh, but I do think that that's likely true. You do think it's true? Yeah, I mean, I, I was on board with that when they introduced the idea in the Darth Plagueis book. I always thought that, I mean, one of the best things about the Plagueis book for me is that it takes some of those kind of weird questions about the prequels and it provides satisfying answers to them. And one of them was Anakin's just like miracle conception. And I like that they weren't specifically trying to create Anakin, but they kind of accidentally did, but still knew that they were responsible for it. So, yeah, I think that while that might not be the exact same situation now, what we just saw in the Darth Vader comic issue number 25, it's definitely implying that that might be what's going on there. Yeah. And on top of that, it's just like we were researching stuff about the comic and like about that after it came out. And it looks like Lucas kind of tossed that idea around. It was in a rough draft of the script. For whatever reason, he decided to take it out. It but was the, the, f the first draft of the Revenge of the Sith yes. script. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that there is probably something to that. I am okay with that idea, but I don't think that I could definitely with... 100% certainty say, yes, it's true. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea too. I like to believe that that is true. And today we watched um, Jedi Council on Collider and Ken was talking about the opera scene where mm -hmm. Palpatine is talking to Anakin. And he was saying that in a way, he thought that was him kind of being like, uh, that was me. Yeah, I mean- I made you. I, I, I always thought that that was another hint as well. He's like- Darth Plagueis was so powerful, he could manipulate the Metachlorians to stare at Anakin, create life. And like, <laughs> well, what does that mean? But I'm, it's just another hint. So, yeah. yeah, I would say that it's likely. But if someone were to say, mm, I don't quite agree with that, I'm like, yeah, that, that's fine, too, because it's one of those force things yeah. where it's like, Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's all up to how you choose to interpret it. It's also one of those things that Lucasfilm is most likely just going to leave up in the air. And yeah. they have all the right to do that. Yeah, they might keep dropping hints like they just did. But they might, they probably won't ever say, like, it definitely happened that way. Yeah. Your name wants to know when we think the episode nine trailer will drop. I'm... Most likely when we're busy <laughs> doing something yeah. important. Well, I don't think we have anything. You know what? The next thing we have scheduled where we're going to be out of town is Star Wars Celebration. <laughs> so, I mean, that's my guess. Well, we'll be there and ready for that if it's then. But... Yeah. I do think it'll be Celebration. I wouldn't be surprised if we got some sort of behind the scenes or like not a trailer so much as like just they make a big deal out of the title reveal mm -hmm. where I watched a video the other day. I think someone posted it on Reddit where... Uh, they revealed the title for Revenge of the Sith. And it was just like, here's a clip from A New Hope. And it would say, A New Hope. Here's a clip from Empire. Empire Strikes Back. And like they just built up and then revealed Revenge of the Sith. So we could get something like that. I wouldn't expect a full-on trailer until Celebration. Yeah, I mean, the first thing we saw from The Last Jedi was just like a behind-the-scenes, really quick couple of shots type thing so i think it'll be something similar to yeah that. it was easy to do that for the last jedi though and not give anything away because it's like oh yeah it's that exact same yeah scene. it picks up <laughs> it, yeah it picks up right where it left off but i mean there might be a scene in nine where they're all on the millennium falcon chatting which is how yeah eight left off i'm so. sure they could do something just to give us just enough Dharma Punk asks if we think the Force or the Force users will play a big part in The Mandalorian. I want to hear what you think first. A big part? No. I, I don't think a big part at all. And I don't know if I want to see Force users at all in a show like this. I mean, I think maybe there could be talk of Force users or people like 
Mas Kanata who are like in tune with the force but aren't actively using it. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to be the one to break out the tinfoil hat today. So plop that on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the Star Wars comics, and this is something that I said, might be hinting at the origins of the Mandalorian character. We don't really know who these people are, but there have been hints that they could be related to the Mandalorian. And in the latest issue, it also was revealed that uh, one of them was a Jedi. So I don't know. The, the whole plot right now just feels like this weird detour that is kind of inconsequential. So I'm like, OK, what if they are setting up who the Mandalorian's people were? And so, you know, I threw that theory out there. And for now, I'm just going to hold on to it. It's very likely way wrong. Uh, and I think that it probably would be better if, like you said, it wasn't so focused on the Force and it's more of an underworld thing. Mm -hmm. But I'll say that potentially, if I'm right here, if my wild guess is right, then the Mandalorian could come from a Force-sensitive line. It could be something like in the X-Wing books, we had Corrin Horn and like three books in, we realize, oh, he's a great pilot because he's the grandson of a Jedi. Mm. <laughs> so it could be something like that. Remind me again the time frame. I'm taking this off. Okay. Remind me again the time frame for the Mandalorian. Uh, I think three years after the Battle of Jakku, something like that. Okay. Four years-ish after. Uh, they did like all, it was like seven years after the Battle of Yavin. So it's like two or three years after return of the jedi mm -hmm. i can't remember exactly what they said yeah i'm just trying to think of like what characters we already know could pop up because like i'm 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 imagining like the season finale of the mandalorian that may be involving a force user sure but i don't know who and i don't know if that's what i want i mean it could even be a new force user i mean maybe it's gonna be ezra <laughs> just throwing it out there <laughs> Well, if Benicio Del Toro is cast again, then, <laughs> then we'll know. Um, yeah, I could totally see like maybe a new untrained force sensitive being brought into the mix somehow. Mm -hmm. I think that would be interesting. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like your idea more than my crazy one. <laughs> just that it's like, let's focus on some scum and villainy for a while. Yeah. Or like a, maybe like an escaped Padawan. But that's been living in the shadows <laughs> for a very for long, a long time. time. But the idea of kind of a morally gray force user, though, is interesting. Like, if the Mandalorian, let's say he were force sensitive, what does someone who has that power do with it if he is not good, not bad? I think that could be cool to explore. He probably is trying to leave it alone and not use it because he knows that that'll just open up a world of bad yeah <laughs> but yeah i think they're i think no matter which way they choose to go it'll be interesting i i could see not having force sensitive people in it at all being cool and i could see having some major force sensitive characters in it still be very interesting yeah phil n wants to know if we think kylo ren will learn more about the dark side in a book or sith holocron in episode nine i think that what's most likely is that yes he will have learned more about the dark side he'll be more powerful what have you but it's going to be something like luke in return of the jedi yeah where it, he it, just shows up and he's like oh wow he got stronger yeah or like i mean if we get what i know both of us are sort of hoping for if we get a scene of kylo going to vader's castle and he happens to find a holocron or maybe that portal that we just saw in the comics or just ha like has a vision while he's there. Like I could see something like that happening and yeah. being pretty cool. And then him like really, really immersing himself in the dark side. Yeah. I mean, that is like one of my dream wish list things is to see Kylo Ren in that castle. And yes, it would be cool. Just like fanboying. Yeah, out. right. <laughs> it would be cool if he found a and holocron. And I got to back to tank. And he, <laughs> he was there. I'm, I'm in the tank where Vader was. <laughs> so yeah, like if he saw an holocron and he learned from it i think that would be cool to see but i'm kind of expecting that we're not going to spend any time on anyone's training i think it's just going to be like oh a few years have passed 
and everyone's stronger. Yeah. Because a time jump kind of gives you that blank check to just say, yeah, a lot of stuff happened and you'll find about it, find out about it in books later. Yeah. And like, we haven't seen a holocron in a live action film, have we? Nope. So I don't think they're going to introduce one in episode nine i don't know i could see it and i would really be excited to see one in live action so yeah it's something that i would like to see i am just not expecting it i guess i wish that there were like a dark side version of jocasta new that has Some like old librarian yeah like an old angry grumpy dark side librarian that has like a library full of books about the sith and the dark side and kylo finds it and he just like hit the jackpot it's kind of like the the knight in indiana jones in the last crusade he's like <laughs> i've been here for so long <laughs> just waiting to teach just waiting yeah <laughs> mound new village asks if there was a reason luke believed that there was still good in darth vader in return of the jedi i don't really think so i mean i think the only reasoning was that he found out it was his father, mm -hmm. and now he's like, well, I'm conflicted. I don't want to kill him, so my only other option is to try to bring him back. Yeah, and I think after training with Yoda and just learning all of, you know, Yoda's wisdom, it, I feel like that sets him up to believe there's good in everybody. Yeah, I think that's true. And I, I mean, I think the real reason, I guess, is that they decided... For Return of the Jedi, what's the most interesting way we can go now? Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, it, they chose correctly. Let's redeem Darth Vader. And so what do we need to do to, to do that? Luke has to believe there's good in him. But yeah, I, I don't think that there's anything that he witnessed or experienced that made him think that, yeah, there's good in him other than just his belief and hope that he could bring his father back. Yeah, I mean, if you found out that your father is still alive, albeit he's a Sith Lord and uh, kind of a robot monster. Something we can all relate to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, part of you is going to be like, well, you know what? Uh, now that I know how to use the Force and I'm a Jedi, I'm going to try to talk him into joining the good guys. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. He does what Vader did in Empire. Vader's like, join me. Yeah. Luke comes back. He's like, no, join no, me. No, join me. You join me. <laughs> That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where we left you a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month will get you access to extra Star Wars Explained content like audio commentaries for the films and also our weekly commentaries for the Clone Wars series. And this week we did a commentary for Destroy Malevolence, so you can check that out right now if you want. On to YouTube questions, Joy is just a lack of information, asks if we think Thrawn will meet Krennic in Thrawn Treason, the book coming out next year, and how we think that will go. 99% yes, they're going to meet. Yeah, I think they're going to meet and it'll go similarly as kind of Krennic and uh, Tarkin's relationship where Krennic seems like this like whiny know-it-all and Thrawn's going to be like, yeah. I know more than you. <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of exactly how it'll go. Krennic is going to try to play outside of his league, and he's just not going to be a match for Thrawn. And yet he's still getting what he wants. Do you think... Like, he's, his project is shutting down mm -hmm. the Defender, so I think that's probably going to rightful... Ruffle? Ruffle some feathers for Thrawn, <laughs> where he is like, I'm so much smarter than this guy, mm -hmm. and yet. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, I, I'm sure Krennic will pretend to be, like, the bigger man in this situation because, like, his project is taking precedence. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see... Well, I guess we can't see it, but read <laughs> uh, the relationship even if it's b really brief. Yeah. I don't know how much of the book it's going to take up, but since we know that it's about that point of time in Rebel Season 4 where Thrawn leaves for just a bit and it's to meet about the Death Star Project slash the Defender Project. So yeah, they're definitely going to be in a room and they'll fight, but I don't know that that's going to be a huge thing in the book. I want to see like a solid page 
of Krennic's thoughts when he first meets Thrawn. And I want to see a solid page of the opposite of Thrawn's thoughts on Krennic. Yeah, let's let's have both. <laughs> Krennic is just kind of like humming a little ditty. <laughs> <laughs> and Thrawn has like just an unbroken sentence. <laughs> mm-hmm. Speaking of books, Zandy Boy wants to know which 2019 book we are most looking forward to. There are already a lot of good ones announced that I'm excited about, but I have to say Master and Apprentice. I have to agree. Uh, when I when we found out that that and the Padme book were coming out, we were both really, really excited. And between the two, it's a really close call for me, but I really want to read about young Obi-Wan yeah. and Qui-Gon and it, their adventures. It's like adventures. a largely unexplored area in the new canon. It's Claudia Gray, who, I mean, it doesn't matter what she's writing anymore. I'm going to be excited <laughs> for that book. She has yet to mess up at yeah. all. And knowing what she did with the short story master and apprentice from, from from a certain point of view, like, I can't wait to see what she has to say with Qui-Gon and the Force. And yeah, see young Obi-Wan. I think it's going to be full of great stuff. Yeah. And along the same lines, uh, E.K. Johnston did the Ahsoka book, mm-hmm. which was amazing. Even, you know, it's a, it gets that young adult uh, stamp on it, but it's a fantastic book and i think she is the perfect person to write a padme book since i've said this before but since we're talking about ya and uh claudia gray i told claudia when i got to meet her at dragon con name drop that she, that i i got into ya books because of her like i read lost stars and i told her that i was like a little hesitant because it was ya and it was like even billed as a romance novel but I, it blew me away how much I loved it. And she was like, yeah, all YA means is that it's a story about a young adult growing up and that they're usually 19 years to 15 years, something like that. But otherwise, that's all YA means. It doesn't, like, I don't know, people f- think that it means it's going to be exactly like Twilight or something. Yeah. It, and that's just not true. They think about, like, oh, it's Twilight. Oh, it's going to be like... Goosebumps books. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. When, Animorphs. <laughs> when she explained that to me, I was like, wow, I just, I didn't know that. That it's like, all it means is it's a story about usually a teenager. Yeah. And it's about growing up and what that means. So if you're ever like, oh, I would read that, but YA, eh, like, yeah. give it a shot. I mean, yeah. Think of how many movies are about coming of age, mm-hmm. you know, teenagers exactly. that are fantastic. Bobby the Brony Gamer asks if we could bring one thing back from Legends, what would it be? Oh, so many choices. <laughs> I think the main thing that I prefer from Star Wars Legends over canon uh, is that the Galactic Civil War went on for longer. I don't really like that the Battle of Jakku happened one year after the Battle of Endor. That just seems so quick. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that now like the upcoming book Alphabet Squadron is going to be about there's still a bit of the Empire out there. The war is officially over, but the fighting hasn't quite ended. I'm glad that they left some flexibility there. But... I completely forgot about that book. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I I wish that it went on for more than just one year. That seems so fast. Yeah. I mean, for me, I would love to talk about when Dragon Ball Z characters were a part of Star Wars Legends. And if we could bring those guys back, that would be great. The Namex. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> the Falling are kind of like the Namex of Star Wars. Look at him. Look at him. Although, we've still got more characters that I would like to see return. We've got Skippy the droid. We've got the Hut Jedi. Do you have any real answers? No. <laughs> Not even Mara Jade? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, it just it just wouldn't make sense at this point. It, it would be tough to bring Mara Jade in now. Like, yeah. it, it would have to be a completely different kind of character. She would... Ooh, here's a thought. If, if Mara Jade or a Mara Jade-ish character were to come into play, it would have to be some sort of um, teacher figure for Rey. Yeah, it, it's just like so much of what made Mara Jade interesting was like she used to be an imperial and it's like i don't think there's room for her to be an inquisitor Mm -hmm. anymore and then she swapped sides and became luke's wife and 
was like a huge force for the light side and it's like everything that we know about her her history would have to change where thrawn i feel like he came in and was adapted pretty well i just don't know that we could do that with mara jade anymore yeah which is a bummer yeah well we still got room for thrawn's little pet uh the salamiri the salamiri yeah or Captain Peleon. Or Captain Peleon. <laughs> Still holding out hope for him. I think he's going to be in Thrawn season. <laughs> we'll see. Jedi Spartan wants to know which demilitarization was better, the one in Legends after the new Sith Wars or the one in Canon after the Battle of Jakku? So both of these are pretty much the same thing. It's like after a big war, especially with the new Sith Wars, uh, which lasted for a long time, like a thousand years, uh... They were like, we have to break this cycle of war. So the Republic demilitarized, especially demilitarizing the Jedi, saying mm -hmm. you are no longer generals and stuff. And then that led into the situation with the Clone Wars where like, oh, we have no army. And the new canon, we have the end of the Galactic Civil War and kind of the same thing. We have to break the cycle of violence and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess I like the one in Legends more. Because at least they had to do that. It's like they had to match what happens in Attack of the Clones. Mm -hmm. The new canon, they didn't have to do that. Yeah. I mean, I guess they had to match what's going on in The Force Awakens and all and basically wipe out the Republic in one blow. And I just don't like that. So I guess when I feel like they had more freedom to do something different, they didn't, mm -hmm. so I prefer the Legends one. This is a tough one for me because I don't know as much about the Legends stuff as you do, so I'll have to defer to your answer for this one. <laughs> However, I will say I would love to see a video by either Eckert's Ladder or Templin Institute about this topic because I think they would do a really good job at explaining it better than we could. Yeah, the, the differences between... Like, I guess the lead up to the demilitarization for both mm -hmm. times in both universes. Yeah. yeah. Get on it, guys. I'm calling you out, Templin. <laughs> Gwen Weisskopf asks, if we like Star Trek as well as Star Wars, and which series or movies have we seen and which of our favorites? Uh, I mean, clearly I don't love Star Trek as much as I love Star Wars. Same. I've, I've, I've seen a handful of them. I've seen all of the new movies. Uh, I've seen First Contact insurrection nemesis i think i've seen most of the next generation movies and i've seen i used to watch next generation with my dad and deep space nine we should really watch deep space nine because it's written by ronald moore and we love battlestar galactica i'd rather watch battlestar again <laughs> uh i i saw voyager i never really saw any of the classic stuff like none of the movies uh pretty much everything i'm familiar with is the next generation and that kind of era everything mm -hmm. around there yeah i saw the new movie like the very first new movie that came out with chris pine mm -hmm. and then the one after that yeah we've watched all three of those together okay yeah so i've seen the new you may movies. have fallen asleep during the third one i tend to do that <laughs> uh but i've never seen any hardly any of the shows or any of the old stuff i did watch the tribbles episode. i remember we watched that and i don't remember why because i just wanted to watch it because everybody talks about the tribbles and i was like i gotta see what this is we watched that and then i think we watched the deep space nine episode where it kind of crosses over where like basically they go back in time to that Tribbles episode, and mm. they are digitally inserted into all of it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's a lot of show. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of Star Trek to get through. Yeah, It's a commitment, but same is true for Star Wars. So yeah. Before we go, we just wanted to give a shout out to Numskull and their scented candles. <laughs> their Star Wars themed scented candles. They sent us a couple sets of these, and you can get scents like Inside of a Tauntaun, Millennium Falcon, Yoda's Cooking Pot, Han Solo and Carbonite, and Lightsaber Duel. I mean, honestly, Inside of a Tauntaun has Flo some floral notes, maybe some, a little bit of, I don't know, guttural Let smell. me ask you this. Would it smell better if we cut it open? 
Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, these are fun little gifts. We actually gave one of our sets away for a white elephant gift, and I think that's kind of the perfect thing for them. So if you need any last minute shopping for a Star Wars fan who can smell in your life, <laughs> check out these scented candles. Yeah, and to be honest, they're, they're nice and small, and there's what, how many to a pack? Uh, five. There's five to a pack, and they had three different packs. And honestly, they don't smell bad. They're not like the... They don't really... They're not gag smells. Yeah, they're not like the the Harry Potter jelly beans where <laughs> you can actually get a booger-flavored jelly bean. I just Most of them smell like soap. So, but yeah. It's a fun little like thing to have in your bathroom, a guest bathroom or something like that where people are like, what? Yeah. That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. As always, thanks for watching, may the Force be with you, and have a very happy and safe holiday.